Welcome to ChessOpenings.com. Today is all about the English opening. It begins with the move pawn to c4. With this seemingly innocent introduction to the game, White is actually launching a deep strategy for central control, and he's also trying to steer the game towards positional waters in which his opponent might be less comfortable. Let's take a look. With pawn to c4, White begins a profound plan to take the light squares under full control and to restrain black from achieving natural play in the center. White's decision to delay moving his central pawns in front of the queen or in front of the king also has some interesting benefits here. As we've seen in other videos, black can often get counterplay in the center by targeting the central pawns and the weak squares that they leave behind. But by refraining from bringing a pawn directly in the center, white is making it a little bit more difficult for black to know where to aim his counterplay at. Another benefit is that by avoiding setting up a pawn in the center, white has scope for his bishops, particularly his light squared bishop, as we'll see in just a moment. One of the key ideas in the English opening is that pretty quickly here, white is going to fee and shadow the light squared bishop. And as we'll see, since there's no pawn sitting in the center here, this bishop is quite a monster. It has wide open scope here. And this is one of the other interesting benefits of the English opening. In fact, white usually combines the moves pawn to c4 with the fianchetto of the bishop and bringing this knight to c3. And all of this contributes to clamping down big time on those light squares, making it difficult for black to target his counterplay. To give an example of how this works, if black just sets up a, let's say a king's Indian setup with knight f6, knight to c3, pawn to g6, pawn g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, white's achieved his setup, and now castles kingside. Now here's where some of the subtle points of the English come in handy. White could simply transpose into a normal king's Indian line by playing pawn to d4. And this would give him typical position with extra space and plenty of ideas to look forward to in the later phases of the game. However, black now has a clear point of counterattack. He can counterattack the d4 point, and he can hope to one day attack this center and the weaknesses that have been left behind. But since white is aiming for an English opening, what he tends to do in these kinds of setups is he tends to build up his central or his queenside attack first, rather than trying to seize so much of the center and taking on some of the risks that come along with that. So, one typical plan that white can use in the English is to complete development and then build up his queenside attack with moves like knight f3, castles, d3, rook b1. Of course, black will be playing things in the meantime, but now the idea would be to play pawn to b4, pawn to b5, and start breaking down some of black's defenses on the queenside, gaining space, stretching out, and seeing how much of an attack we can get while in the meantime, it's harder for Black to know exactly where to aim his counterplay. Do you really see any weaknesses for White in this position? They're, they're difficult to find. Because even the dark squares can, can be supported later by advances by the pawns. The pawns have remained flexible here. And this is one of the general ideas of the English openings, to stay very flexible and play for this queenside attack with minimal risk. Another interesting system that White could play for is known as the Botvinnik system, and this begins with the paradoxical pawn to e4 move. And this might look a little strange since we just talked about the idea of not blocking in this light squared bishop, but in fact, there are some benefits to playing in this way. This is a super solid setup for white, and now this grip on the light squares is just, it's just huge now, and it's very difficult for black to break through. On the other hand, later as play continues, let's say, something like d6, knight ge2, e5, d3. As play continues, white often has more options than just to build up a queenside attack. He can certainly play like this here, but he also has the idea of eventually breaking through on the king side in these kinds of positions, say, after castling. And this is another benefit of this line, is that it allows you to, to look for play on both flanks if you choose to with white. So. We've seen a couple of different setups for white, which tend to fall under the general theme of aiming to control the light squares and then gradually building up play on the flanks. This works against a number of different setups by black, 
But now I want to go into what some of the most popular setups for black are. Without a doubt, one of black's major ways of combating white's light squares strategy is to play for a counterimposing grip on the dark squares. Black can do this from the first move with the aggressive move pawn to e5, and this sets up a position known as the reverse Sicilian. And this is one of the most fundamental setups for the English opening, so one that you really need to study with either side. With this move, black is aiming to get control over the dark squares, especially the d4 point, and later, after completing his development, he'll want to either expand with pawn to f5 and start building a kingside attack, or later he might even try to achieve d5 very quickly to see if he can achieve some equality on the light squares. For example, after pawn to g3, knight c6, and bishop g2, black can select pawn to f5 right away, which would be known as the reversed grand prix attack. And after developing his pieces behind the pawns, let's say knight c3, knight to f6, e3, pawn to g6, white just continues his development in knight ge2, and we get bishop g7, and castles. Black is all set up to play for a standard kingside attack, maybe by breaking with pawn to f4 at some point, while white has an effective counter grip in the center and long-term play on the queen side. For example, He's always ready to plop in a knight on d5, and he's always ready to break with pawn to d4. Notice how many key central squares, though, that the kingside pawns are taking control over. They've got d4, they've got e4, f4, and g4, so black has plenty of space here. Of course, white does not need to be overly afraid, as there are some good ways to keep the situation under control, but this highlights the point that black doesn't have to just sit around and wait for white to build up his own attack on the center or on the king side. Now another more restrained approach after knight c6 here backing up, another more restrained approach would be to avoid playing f5 too early, say by just g6, and then let's say knight c3 and bishop g7. Here in comparison to the king's indian setup that we looked at at the very beginning of the video, black has already set up a pawn on e5 and this definitely restrains white from achieving pawn to d4. You just can't even think about it here. He's also postponed figuring out what to do with his kingside's knight, and this means that he might have some extra options either to play it to e7 or h6, where it won't be blocking that bishop. He may still in this position choose to expand with f5, but he'll probably hold off until it's a little bit better supported. Black's strategy, however, does not simply have to be based around dark squared dominance. He may also try to struggle for equality on the light squares, and this is done by trying to achieve a d5 break as quickly as possible. Now, since white is struggling to get control over that square so quickly, black has to act pretty fast in order to pull this strategy off. One way to do this is, for example, to play knight f6, bishop g2, and now pawn to d5. This is called the reversed dragon. And now after the moves pawn takes pawn and knight takes pawn, a very interesting strategic situation arises. Black has managed to move his d-pawn to get rid of that bind that, that white was trying to set up on the d5 square, and so he's freed up his pieces quite a bit. On the other hand though, white still has a 2 to 1 central majority, which means that he'll have an easier time restraining black's play and may also try to get some aggressive chances in the center at a later time. And also, black's strategy has not done anything to really dampen the power of this light squared bishop on g2, so white can still aim for a queenside attack later on in the game. So, to get a glimpse of the key positions, white often plays knight c3, which pushes black backwards with knight b6. And now after some natural moves, let's say knight f3, developing the knight, attacking pawn, knight c6, and now castles kingside, bishop e7, and let's say pawn to d3, castles, and pawn to a3, white is simply played normally, and he's ready to now go ahead with the queenside expansion b4 and b5. The appealing aspect of this setup for black, though, is that he's not at all cramped, and even hold some extra scope for his pieces since the e5 pawn is actually pretty well advanced here. And so this is one popular way that black can gain his d5 advance. 
There's another way for black to play for a d5 advance, which leads to a totally different situation. And that is to play pawn to c6 before playing pawn to d5. So now we're aiming to recapture with a pawn. The disadvantage is that black is announcing his intention, and he gives white the ability to take strong countermeasures right away, and this is normally done with the reply pawn to d4, which is a great move by white. And now, after pawn takes pawn, queen takes pawn, and pawn to d5, black is always going to eventually be saddled with an isolated pawn here when white is ready to capture on d5. So play normally actually continues knight f3 and bishop e7 first. And now there's an exchange which takes place on d5, pawn takes pawn, and pawn takes pawn, and castles kingside. And now black's weakness on d5 is probably not completely compensated for by the open files that black has and the open piece play. So white has a little bit of a plus here. But once again, since black has achieved pawn to d5, he doesn't have too many problems finding active positions for his pieces. And this is pretty attractive for black as well. He should have no problems finishing development and getting a, a decently balanced game here. I hope that this video has helped you to clarify some of the major ideas of the English opening. White is launching a strategy to really take the light squares under control, and black has quite a few different options to choose between. On the one hand, if he plays d5 very quickly, he solves a lot of his problems, but he creates some other unique positional problems. On the other hand, if he takes on a closed game, white might feel a little bit more comfortable psychologically, as he can always play for the same plans, and he might also end up being just a little bit faster, since he's delayed moving his pawns in the center. There's certainly plenty of fascinating information here, and I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Look forward to seeing you again, and thank you.